It's the weekend. It's mailbag. We are joined this week by Matt, Pete, and eventually Dave. Uh, he's not slept in. He's just having some technical issues, I think. Uh, we'll get straight into it, lads, as ever. Uh, so we'll go with the hot topic. What's your biggest never a penalty that? Anyone know what the hot topic's from? Is it that a penalty? Mean. That was a massive penalty. I think it was a penalty too. Yeah. Where are you on this, Pete? Nailed on penalty. It anywhere else on the anywhere else on the pitch, it's it's a free kick. It's foul. Yeah, it, it's literally like, like he went for the ball, he missed the ball, he caught the man. It's a foul. Yeah, studs up. I don't think yeah. it's anything more than a penalty. I don't think it's like no. a reckless send it off or anything. But it's a it's a foul, like you say, if yeah. you get the ball first. Yeah, then it, uh, and yeah. also Kane Kane definitely did not volley his foot. He got his foot on on him first. That was that was the key thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Kane volleyed the ball, and then. Yeah. And yeah. then got his foot taken. Yeah. All right. And anyway, even if you don't think it was a penalty, who cares? Because Ronald Koeman went home unhappy and so did Virgil van Dijk. So, do you know what I mean? If you don't like that. Dave, you all right? Hi, <laughs> lads. You okay? So, we've just, we've just launched into the hot topic, so I'll come to you. Uh, what's your biggest never a penalty, that? Um, when Liverpool got one against Tibbet. Yes. Oh, yeah. With David um, Gerrard running alongside him, and uh, was it Clattenburg? Couldn't wait to give it. Could yeah, he? Gary said that. Gary said never a pen. Answer the one where Hibbert brings down Gerrard, but that gobshite Clattenburg gives the pen. Yeah, yeah. That was that was horrendous. That that was like he, it was almost like he couldn't wait to give it. Do you know what I mean? I don't think you get that now either. I don't even think it goes to VAR these days because it was just no. uh, it was just. He was just running like shoulder to shoulder, and then Gerard decides to throw himself on the floor, and not not of many times where I felt felt sorry for, for Tony Evans. There was no challenge at all, was there? No, he didn't even put mean. a leg across for nothing. They were just yeah. running, and then it's just Way! But he actually pulls Hibbert down with him to make it look like he's fouled him. Exactly, it's the but one where he sticks his leg across Hibbert, doesn't he, and then goes. Yeah, it was one of them. But the, but the the same contact was happening from the halfway line onwards. Because he was yeah. running short, like pretty much shoulder to shoulder, and yeah. it was literally as soon as he he touched the white line, that was it. He just threw it, his legs went, didn't he? Um, and then and then compounded by the fact that we didn't get that penalty in the last last you know in injury oh. time, where Lescott just gets dragged out, get, get by get RKO'd by frigging. Was that the same game? That was yeah. the same game, wasn't it? Yeah, and that was, that was the same game with their uh, cows as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where he nearly, he nearly assaulted uh, Neville. Yeah. Yeah. Hence and his name after the referee. Yeah, and it was Brent the same game where uh, Phil Devil did at Golden Bags. Yeah, I'm going to say that. It was a good save. It was a very good save. Yeah, because it was off um, Lucas's effort, wasn't it? Lucas had that shot, didn't he? And Neville just, just made a belt to save it. Yeah, just... they, can't, they didn't all happen in the same game, did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, same, the same game. Two red, two red cards, because we had, we had two cents off as well, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, ne- Neville inhibit, yeah. Yeah, Neville inhibit, yeah. Crazy. He's certainly so with Neville. Yeah, like, Neville, you can't argue with Neville. Like, yeah. that. Oh, that was exactly he was just lying there on the line, just like, yeah. But, okay. actually, as well, Dave Cout scored that penalty, didn't he? Shouldn't have been on the pitch. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. I wonder if the Reds, have, been been the Reds have got any derbies named after a referee because it's been that bad. No. I can't they, say they, it. They, they name them after the referees because they give them man of the match. That's yeah. It. Yeah, well, was, um, the thing was Webb, wasn't it, for them? They always used to kick off on Webb um, for the Man United game. He used to say, because he was from, like, Withenshaw or something oh, like yeah. that. They, they, they can't oh, stand the Greater Taylor. Manchester referee, even though Greater Manchester is pretty much about a third of the entire country. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Who's the one who's got, got a thing with... Webb's from Yorkshire. Oh, he is? Yeah. He's South Yorkshire police, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. That's right, yeah. And now, now he's uh, now he's king of the refs, isn't he? When he does this little show with Michael Owen, the main body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if he's like, if he's Baron Greenback, is like Michael Owen, Baron Greenback's little caterpillar. Does anyone get the Danger Mouse reference? By the way, I realise I'm about ten years older at least than everyone else here. So never mind. We'll move on. Uh, Pete, <laughs> what's, what's your biggest never a penalty? I think I mentioned it on Twitter. There was. I can think of two. If it's for, like Everton related, there was um, that we got as well. There was the first game of the season against Watford, where yes. it was the handball 
against the, uh, that was that it hit, hit him square in the face. It's um, so funny that. Yeah, and it was the most blatant, blatantly nearly knocked him out. Yeah. And I think the referee <laughs> thought that that he was like you know feigning injury, but his arm his arm was slightly up there. Yeah, but it, like just hit him square in the grid. Yeah, like full on square in the in the in the chops. Like, and then there was another one as well. I'd like to say it was Sunderland away where we got a dodgy one where Osman went to take a shot, and he saw to like. Can't remember, he, he saw, I can't remember if he air shot, if he did an air shot or he like scuffed his foot on the ground and the ball just ballooned off. And the referee thought that it was a fact like that the Sunderland player must have made the challenge, but there was no challenge at all. And I think even I think even Moyes came out at the end and said that was never a penalty. Um, oh, no, it takes a lot for him to say something like that. Yeah, we got, <laughs> I'm sure it was late, it was like quite late on as well. Um, but yeah, for some reason that's that's stuck in my mind. So we'll have yeah, to have a little look for that one. <laughs> yeah. Matt? Uh, well, I was going to say this one as a joke. It wasn't <laughs> even given as a penalty, but the Rodri handball, which cost the Reds the league, I don't reckon that's given as handball now. Because, like, his arm was down it... by the side, wasn't it? Like the silhouette kind of thing. Like, his arm wasn't really sticking out. I know we still wanted it at the time, but... You know, in hindsight, it, it was an absolutely fair, fair call. I suppose. I suppose if you look at the Cucurella one, yeah, then it's, that it's, was a penalty. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> kind of a bit like that. I think his arm was out there and he, he touched it. Yeah. But he brings his also, arm down to make contact with the ball. If he keeps his arm where it is, it goes underneath his armpit. It goes in yeah. the net. That was that was oh, a better save than Phil Neville. That <laughs> <laughs> it was a shock. Uh, yeah. One I thought of immediately it was Jota last season. Oh. Where, he, where he goes round the keeper and basically he can just slot it but he just goes down against the pen and it's just oh, not yeah. happening that. Yeah, that, was, that was appalling that but then the one that they didn't get and do you remember when uh, Udegaard just blatantly handballed it yeah oh god yeah basketball did that yeah. end up a draw as well I think that like <laughs> yeah I think it did yeah. Them league, yeah. yeah do you, was, do you remember Gerard, best... Gerard sorry go on so, go on Pete sorry there was Steve, Gerard got one in the first game of the season a few years ago, and there and there was no contact. But the referee said something like the intent, it because of the intent for the challenge. So he rode the he rode the challenge, landed, and then just threw himself on the ground. No contact whatsoever. But they gave the pen and said it was because it was for intent. Marco Materazzi got sent off for that. Remember he got sent yeah. off against Coventry and he sat on the hoardings crying. Yeah. Darren Huckabee jumped over his challenge and he got sent off for intense. Darren Huckabee, mate. Darren Huckabee. I'd have taken yeah. Darren Huckabee in many days. Yeah. Good player, Darren Huckabee. Dangerous. <laughs> and basically, anyone who can run is dangerous against Everton. It's always been yeah. the case, hasn't it? It was the initial. I know it broke. The, uh, I didn't reach the start of the show, but was it about the, the Kane thing? Yeah. Yeah. What did you make of that, Dave? It's never a penalty. Oh, we've all agreed it was a penalty all day. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Nowhere near a penalty. What 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 what's what's the defender supposed to do so, when he's trying to block the ball? Well, but, well you could say that. Oh, more, more to the point, more to the point that I think he's got a shot away. That shot is not affected by that lad touching his foot. That that shot's been blazed over. It's not going to yeah, make but, any difference if he was contacted with it or not. Yeah, but you, you if you're in the area, you can make a pass, get cleaned out. It's a penalty. Doesn't matter if you got if you finished your phase of the move. Yeah. Kind of okay thing. then. Okay, well. Take it the other way. If he's had scored, would you still be saying it's a penalty? No, well, because the, because the referee gives that gives that advantage as an advantage. Yeah, exactly. It's just never a pen. I don't think. I I it think is. that he can't help if he's trying to stop. Surely, as a defender, you get an allowance to try and stop the ball. Yeah, but if ball. you if you it was kicked, kicked the in the foot, it was only kicked because of Kane's momentum of striking the ball. He struck the ball. That's it. I know. Kane got I, there. His studs yeah. are five foot off the ground, though. He's flashing at the bottom of his boot, and his foot's five foot off the ground. Because that's, that's where the ball block. is. That's and I don't think Kane. I don't think Kane volleyed the bottom of his foot so much as he put his studs on the top of Kane's boot. I think that's yeah. the crucial thing with that. And Kane. You think Kane? You think Kane? If he's not there, you think Kane hits that differently? No, but I think he's fouled after he's touched it. Yeah. But that, that, well, that's, that's, I think that's really where my, ar- my argument point is. If plays continued and it's not prevents them from scoring, but you get that yeah. advantage, don't you? So there was no advantage. He had this shot. Well, yeah, it's actually yeah, exactly. You've you 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 you
I wish he it wasn't the Bardley got... remake. Oh. I ba- badly wanted the Netherlands to win, so I'm just maybe just crying. <laughs> but then, if, reckon... say, say if you're a defender on the right hand side and you go to clear the ball, someone does that. You go to clear it up the line. Someone comes in, follows through, hits you. You know, their studs hit the top of your foot. It's a free kick, he, regardless of if the ball goes out for a throw in or a goal kick down the other end. <laughs> They still call it back. It's still a foul, isn't it? And the way yeah, I look that, at it, is, I think I'm that that's probably a fair point. That that's where I'm probably, you know, saying it like it's higher stakes, given the fact that it's a penalty. Yeah. You're right. If that happens outside the box, I suppose, <laughs> like that, I, I I suppose as well. When I'm sort of contradicting myself, if that happens outside the 18 yard box, I'll be still saying that that's a foul, and England should have a free kick. So yeah. I sort of get your point. Yeah, well, we're going to say that. Matt, were you going to say something oh, on that? I can't remember. I was just saying, if it, if it was to go to the net and the ref saw the foul, I reckon he would have given the goal and then booked him anyway for the, the reckless challenge because he did catch him pretty hard. And he was bumping that, it after that. Is that still part of a thing, that double jeopardy thing? Didn't he, didn't he do that once yeah. where you can only I get I think it's just a red card, that, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it? Was it something like that, was it? I think it was just red cards if you clean through. And you get the penalty, yeah. you don't get sent off as well. Yeah, that's, only if it's, that's only if still it's going. a meaningful attempt at the ball. If you just oh, right, okay. drag someone over, it's a red. Right. Is that yeah. still going? Yeah. No idea. <laughs> it's just very, it's very rarely tested, like because I reckon I've seen about three red cards and penalties since it came in. Because it does it it is just like proper throw them over, you know, not even attempting to challenge. Cumin in ninety two. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Did, right, I watched that back the other day. Have you seen the state of David Seaman on that free kick? <laughs> he's basically halfway he's he's like well over to the, the other side of where Coombe puts it in and about yeah. like three yards into a six yard box. It's incredibly <laughs> bad goalkeeping. And then he makes this mad sort of stumble over to save it. It's it's awful. So anyone who's saying David Seaman's better England keeper than Jordan Pickford, like it. That was a big argument this week, wasn't it? Yeah, it's. I just. I don't get it. And people and are saying kept on going on with the the bank Peter save as well. No chance. Pe- people are saying Peter Shilton because oh, we only remember him from like the sort of latter days, sort of eighty six and ninety when he was getting a bit past it. Nineteen seventy three, he dropped an absolute bollock, uh, and England didn't get qualified for the World Cup because a goal just squirmed under him. Nineteen seventy three, shite. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> never wow. a penalty. Stephen said biggest never. A- Sorry, Matt, we want to say something. Oh no! Just no. So I, I tried and failed to get blocked by Peter Shilton this week. Oh. Uh-huh. We go again. Something about Maradona's got to do it. No. Oh mate, he just gets was, that all the time, doesn't he? You no, know, he was. He was moaning about Leicester having a uh, a betting sponsor, and I said clubs should be reaching higher than getting betting sponsors on the shirt. <laughs> I reckon that was too subtle for him, you know. Yeah. Have you seen, have you seen his wife? Not recently, no. Wife. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. Let's just leave it. He's done well. Let's just leave it there. I, I'm just. I'm not, I'm not referring. I'm not referring to what she looks like. And more so that she's about twenty-one. And he oh, was, what you're saying? He was, he's punching. He's punching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think she's actually taller than him as well. <laughs> um, penalty shout. Stephen said, "Biggest never a penalty has to be keen against Brighton under Silver." That's a great shout. Yeah. That was horrific. Yeah. Um, Liam said Watford first day of 06 07. And um, he said it's generally bad, but it's also discussed on the latest episode of a certain pod, which could be the Good Times podcast, hosted by Liam and Kev, his mate. Um, Mike, never repent anything involving Ashley Young, especially against Forrest. Um, Gary, Hibbert, and Gerard. Uh, ben, niche one from Ben from Australia. Italy versus Australia in the 2006 World Cup. Our man Lucas Neal gave one away in 2006. This was never a penalty. That I don't remember that at all. Can we say? Can we say good ones as well? Like ones we liked. Yeah, go ahead. Well, to- just before Toppy Tower said most of Liverpool's fair tackle. Oh, uh, I was going to say uh, Calvert Lewin when Lovren drove the down <laughs> in the back. <laughs> I, I still, I, I still think that's under dispute. That you know, it's it's yeah. really difficult to go one I, way or the other with that. I love the way that was. That was genuinely our second penalty at Anfield for I'm gonna say about 80 years. Yeah. And yeah, they much, yeah. still moan like fuck about it. It was under the it was under Big Sam, that wasn't it? Yeah. Rooney yeah. scored. Yeah. That was the it, yeah, really one as well. Just just speaking of which actually that's on the first episode of the Good Times podcast. I, I want to be on a commission for them, you know. It's pretty good. Yeah. I want to get as well. Two years ago we didn't get the one where 
Gordon charges through into the oh yeah the box and he's it's a blatantly obvious penalty and we just didn't get it. I think they were one 0 up at the time. Um, it was the, the one, no, it wasn't. wasn't It was the year what? before. Uh, it wasn't the actually young one. Was it? it was what? Well, it wasn't the actually young one. It was the year before, wasn't it? Yeah, no, just... it was the year before. Yeah, twenty twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just play it into one though, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> they did. Um, yeah, twice. Right, speak, speaking of which, Liam's asked. Uh, the ex Everton player you hate the most, Barnby aside. Now, right, Gary has said oh. Tim Howard, but we, there's no Tim Howard rule day because I don't want to set you off that way because that'll be the next half hour of the show gone. So, apart from <laughs> Tim Howard for you, I also uh, agree with Dave, by the way, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Hoko said, like Tim, Do you know what? Do you know why I enjoy I'm not going to say his name, but do you know why I enjoy it? It's because it just kicks people off, and I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I absolutely mean it, but it probably people just it's, tee off on it. It's triggering, you know, yeah. Defense, fucking nonsense, all that. Hoko said, Keon has got to be up there for fighting with my hero, Shudi, and also clearly the caveman stinks of BO, which is a fair shout, actually. He's annoying, <laughs> Keon. <laughs> stinks of Bo. <laughs> and that, that, that fight with Shudi seems like such a mismatch to me. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, who, who, um, who do we hate? I, I, Anthony Gordon sprung to mind immediately. If he signs for the Reds and the Reds are a bit like, oh God, that's, that's not right. Right. so much, yeah. I would quite like it mm-hmm. until he scores his first derby goal, obviously, because the mm. it's not like it's not like the, the, it would piss us off. The hatred would just be massive. It'd be, it'd be amazing. Because that ship sailed anyway. We can't stand them anyway. So, Who's he replacing if they sign him? Diaz, maybe. I don't, I don't think, think he will. Not anyway, there's no I way he joins Newcastle Liverpool. Just a bit desperate, weren't you? Yeah. No way he joins Liverpool. Him. Mm. In terms of in terms of players going, uh, I mean, I, I used to think about Lescott a bit, Stones a little bit, but they weren't that bad of Bellens, were they? Lescott, um, Lescott, <laughs> <left. laughs> we, we've had several interviews with Lescott, so there's nothing wrong with him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So um, I don't know. It's hard to think. I, I I always like I always fight players that have gone in my mind. With it's obvious why they've gone because we're shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or they're shit. I mean, it, 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 oh, they're Rooney shit. Yeah, me. exactly. Yeah. It was Rooney for years, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, Rooney when he celebrates when he comes to goodness in the score yeah. when he sort of like he just got past in a jammy way past Hibbert. and he scores that goal and he skips it where you're sitting basically. Les. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he just skipped there. past. The bar yeah, end, yeah. Um, that that was hard to take that one. There's, I'm sure there's plenty for this that I can't instantly get in my head. You know, we can't stand um, Arteta. Mm-hmm. Arteta, 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 Arteta Baines Day for a bit, for a bit. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, Arteta, yeah. Arteta celebrated in front of the Evertonians in the cup, and then after in the following the following game in the league. We've like yeah. proper went for him, and he yeah. and he lost his head. But he's back Baines, to being restored yeah. now, isn't he? In fact, yeah, I, I, no, I, I'll set it, yeah, just for like doing what he did on deadline day, basically. Mm. Fellaini? No, no. It, did, it did piss me off when he celebrated in the semi final. Because yeah. like, where did that come from? Because no one ever gave him any ship. But yeah, yeah, there's no no hardship from me. This is a cracking I've question, got, you know, and I'm good to the can't think of a, of a top one. I've got one I hate. Andy Hinchcliffe. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my. <laughs> I despise him. Despise I could do a podcast on him, mate. Could do a podcast on that fella. What? We could oh, do a could podcast do a on that fella, mate. Do you reckon he just hates us purely because of Howard Kendall? Because he sold them <laughs> he twice. Bought, he got it's rid got of them. <laughs> mate, it's, a, it's the fucking tone in his voice that gets me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, just fucking shut up with that nose and chin and fuck off. <laughs> I can't, mate. He's hard. I think I've got his number as well. I might just message him. <laughs> get him on now. Let's get him on old new blue blue. Listen, Andy, Related. why do you hate us, mate? Related. Have you ever got a train from Liverpool South Parkway towards town? Yeah, from that end of the city, mate. No. Do you know when you go down the steps onto the platform? There's that weird, like, cartoon witch picture <laughs> with like a big nose, and, like a big sticking out skin. <laughs> That's him. I'll get a picture of it next time I go through. Yeah, you need to get it. You've got to get it now for the picture of this when you finished it. You know. 
There's another yeah. one for the kids. He looks he looks like with the nose and chin, he looks like Fenella of Children and the Wheelies. No one remembers nice. that. So don't worry. <laughs> um uh Pete. Oh, Matt, anyone else? I was gonna say the Hinchcliffe, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um no, it's not me. Well, what one that might be a bit controversial, I wouldn't say I hate, but I probably dislike as much as people seem to love him. And that's Rodriguez. Like I think he just took us for a complete ride, and and I just don't understand the love that he gets. I think because he was dead good. I think, <laughs> yeah. It, but like, I know he did take us for a ride in terms of wages and stuff, but he was dead good. In about twenty percent of the games, he actually paid for us, which was about twenty yeah. percent of the games we paid him to play. <laughs> so it made like, it, it made COVID okay though, didn't it? Like you're sitting at home, we can't do so anything, but like. He sort of did COVID all right. Sort of top. I reckon he's he an absolute tank as well. What's up? He's just. <laughs> Who's strikers that have won? Oh, I've got one. I've got one. Go on. Radzinski. Yes, Dave. That's a shout. That is a shout. Because didn't he start slagging us off as soon as he signed the Fulham? Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Said, he said they have more chances staying up in the Premier League than. Then um or getting to yeah staying up in the Premier League didn't he and then yeah. we ended up taking us in fourth proper little yeah. tear yeah Bob shite him do you, yeah. remember, do you remember the uh, the game when he came back to Goodison and it was like the, the contrast between the two because Mark Pembridge was playing for playing for Fulham as well and when Pembridge went to take a, take corners he was getting like a standing ovation like a really good <laughs> like and but but it was almost like going over the top of it yeah. because of how much <laughs> Mark <laughs> well, Pembo was getting like proper like heroes welcome Pembo yeah what's he got out here I think pull back a little bit a tiny bit pull it back to... oh yeah I've got it <laughs> <laughs> that is Andy Hinch send us that battle man. I'll put that as the picture so people can see it <laughs> Mark Pembridge though man bless him couldn't, couldn't run because it's, it's his left foot sorry great left foot um Ben has asked which current Everton player would you most like to be an agent for, and where would you send them? Hmm. Pete, as, oh. as in like a James Bond kind of agent. Well, you interpret this question however you like, man. Um, I I was immediately thinking of on it and buying for three hundred million. That or Roma, Roma getting to pay. <laughs> getting to pay <laughs> yeah. <on> <laughs> If we do it before the takeover goes through, they can't get us on it. Imagine that. Jesus. Yeah. I, was gonna, gonna say, I, was, I was thinking like um, Neil Morpai would send them somewhere really horrible. Like oh, God, really, yeah. really horrible that he that he despises. Mildred. The look on your face there, mate, that's proper evil. Like you, you, you want him, you want him to he's, go to somewhere like Bromley or something, don't you? He, he's the fu- he's the future answer to that earlier question. I've yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to have an all right season in, you know. Do you reckon? I think he's refreshed. Yeah, I think he's come back refreshed. And he's starting to as well. Too. <laughs> he started shit posting as well, which is great. He is what, a very what, what good was, What was the social media thing that everyone kicked off about him? He, was Engl- he had an England shirt on, didn't he, or something? Take something like piss. that, yeah. There was some sort of furore over him, wasn't there, at some point? Well, well what, what it was, was the fact that he was coming back. <laughs> it was when Brighton scored against us. And he he celebrate he put a post out saying get in or something like that celebrating Brighton scoring against him <laughs> oh, when yeah. he was on loan at Brentford last season and then he came out and said like the Everton fans made my life hell to be fair we probably oh. like, I mean it wasn't our fault that he was crap though you know? and the thing is I don't think he got anywhere near as much shit as he thinks he did in his head if he if he thinks that was making his life hell he hasn't seen anything no Jesus. no mate it was it was. It was uh... There was there was some like people standing outside Finch Farm and all that waiting for him to kick off and all this sort of thing, didn't he? Yeah, but at he least he didn't go inside. Well, do you know do, <laughs> do you know the other thing about him as well? It was like the the money that he paid for. I don't think Thelwell got half the abuse. He probably should have. Yeah, fifteen million. That's bad. That mate, he's he's got to do a lot a lot of explaining to do with if you're giving him a few quid now and we've got some more money. Yeah. I, don't know. Yeah, I think on it. paper it wasn't it wasn't a ridiculous sum on paper at the time. Like if you look at what he's done immediately before and last season, 
that's probably about right in the Premier League. It's just championship player, to... obviously. Let's be honest, he's a championship player. I think the thing is though, when you look at him as well, it's like what he what he did at Everton and the chances he had and the chances he missed. Mm. It's like the one in the derby, made like, the one in the derby. Me. Before and after that yeah. season, season at Everton, he wouldn't have missed them. He buries yeah. them. Mate, the, that, that one against him, um, that one in the derby when Cody's goal got this yeah. mark. The Fulham one as well. The Fulham oh, one. They had about three against Fulham, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's just a championship yeah. player. I mean, I don't, I don't hate the man, but well, like you yeah. say, though, when he's when he's, it's the chances that he was missing that he wouldn't miss for anyone else, and that I kind yeah. of feel like yeah. maybe there's something to it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the dark yeah. side. That makes his mission on yeah. purpose. You, you know that gift, you know that gift. Are we the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> or the Kermit one with the dark side. That one. Um, anyone got an Everton player they want to be an Asian foot Matt? Have you got one? Uh, <clears throat> I was going to say Delhi, but his agent must be absolutely cracker with what's going on. Who's it's this? not what he does, isn't it? Who'd you say? Delhi. 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 He's coming back, isn't he now? Apparently so, yeah. yeah. A very odd thing, but, uh, you know, I trust Sean Dyche for some reason. We'll see what happens there. <laughs> it it doesn't seem saying, like man, a very it's... nice thing to do, does it? So, clearly, there must be something. Now, nah, just getting young head. players and all that. doesn't even seem like Sean Dyche has got back from uh, Glastonbury. That's what's happened, isn't it? Sean Dyche has come back from Glastonbury, still off his yeah. tits. Still Basically. stuck in a tent or he's, something like he's that. He's come back, loved up to fuck still. And yeah. He's just said, yeah, go ahead, we'll keep him. When the mushrooms yeah. wear off, he'll be like, what's he doing here? <laughs> Who's this kid? He, he's not old enough. What's going on? Baines, get him back into the academy, will you, mate? <laughs> um, speaking of Glastonbury-ish, uh, Steve said, following the killer show in the end of the England game and then going straight into Mr. Brightside, what would your perfect gig at the new stadium be? And what band would knock out the best version of Spirit of the Blues? I've got an all-day line up here, but... I'll, I'll throw it out first. Oh. Um, Anyone? It's got to be the boss. Oh, Springsteen, good shout. Yeah. Yeah. Got to be the boss. Like if you if you listen to uh, Glory Days, you could quite easily work Spirit of the Blues into that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I you think Katie Perry. Now, aren't you? Sorry. You just did what I said then, didn't you? I probably shouldn't have said it. Oh, no, I missed it. No, I didn't. I, I, I said Katy Perry. Okay. Uh, it's your uh, gig, Dave. It goes back. <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> you, you used to love Katy Perry. I, lo- I, love, I love Pink. Don't elaborate. Pink, Pink's one of my heroes. I'd have Pink to it. We'll we'll come on to that soon. Well, Pink. Yeah. Pink's got a question on that soon. Um. Yeah, so Springsteen, New Jersey to the Mersey, got to be. Yeah, yeah, I like a bit of that. Yeah, I've got a, I've got another one, just purely for sel- selfish reasons. Oasis, try and tempt them back, back together. Could you imagine Liam Gallagher, like with his, with his voice, doing Spirit of the Blues? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That'd be like you know, and yeah, he, he would hundred percent wade into the Reds as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, he hates yeah, them, yeah. doesn't he? Proper so, hates them. That would be lovely. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've gone with a very Everton theme thing, and I'm, I'm predictable as fuck, and Matt, you'll appreciate how predictable I am with this lineup. So it's loose articles, Nick Ellis, Spin, Bill Ryder Jones, Camel Fat. Camel Fat, yeah. Right, yeah. I think that'd be a good line. Bit, bit mixed. Lee Mavis, now. Surprise, Seth. Now Surely. you're talking. Surely it will be McCartney, though. You'd think Paul McCartney, wouldn't you? We'd have to. Yeah, we'd, what, we'd the, alleged, the alleged Evertonian. Yeah, but we we we. Def- I think we'll be going for some. I think we'll be going for yeah. McCartney himself. And the season ticket holders should get first dibs on tickets and the discount as well. I think. Yeah, hundred percent. I was looking at those Corp Live tickets. Bloody hell! <laughs> they, were, they were expensive. And we 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 had a, uh, a look at that, didn't we, Pete? It was like. Yeah, and you get it. You get a free if you're gonna if you're actually interested in getting them. If they're not sold by now, you got to have a, a look around the live buildings, didn't you? Mm, in the, yeah, um, the Everton offices and like they put on this. It, it is brilliant. Like they put on this little museum, didn't they, Pete? That we walked around and all that. And I think they remember they said something at the end saying, um, "You can come and have a look at this if you're interested in getting corporation packages." I was like, "What happens if you're just a season ticket holder?" Like. 
let's just move on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, there's the amazing. Like the money. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ben, bit of a public service here. Ben, um, sorry, Pete, bit of a public service from you. Ben's asked. Uh, he's heading over from Australia in uh, late November uh, for the first time. Where can you get a copy of the Everton Women's Songbook? Okay. When he when he's over, he needs to he, get down to Walton Park. Or if he's going to the match, let me know. And I'll, admit, I'll, I'll bring one. I'll, I'll get one for him. Um, he, so by, by the time he's over, the new one should be out. But I'll get him a copy of last season's as well. Okay. So we can have right. And I'll get them and- on me. Yeah, and he can he can have a couple of free tickets as well on me if he wants to go. There you go. Nice one, lads. That's right. And speaking of which, can you give him a preview of the song you've got for Claire Wheeler? Oh, it's a belter. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Tina Turner. Right. And it's she left her old club in Sydney, went to play in Denmark with Sorensen. Then she packed her bags and headed to the toffees. Now she's running round in the number seven. Claire Wheeler keeps on running. The toffees will keep on singing. We're singing, singing, singing Claire Wheeler. She left her old club in Sydney. Comes on for ages. That's, Love it. Really good. That's incredible. I wish we had this much fun at the fellas games. It's oh, a, we are. Oh, mate, it's the best ever. I mean, I, you know, me, Pete. I was, uh, well, I, I was going to say it. I should really shouldn't say that. I have to sit with Pete and tolerate this, but it's not. <laughs> I'll probably get killed by everyone who goes there for the uh, the crowd section. But it's the best day out ever, isn't it, Pete? Love coming along. Yeah, and then I, 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 I start trying that. to talk to him about the actual game, Jordan. <laughs> like I can't talk to him until like either half time or the the nineties finish because he's just like sings. That long, I'm like, mate. Don't stop it. Shall so I just Don't message stop. you on WhatsApp instead while I'm standing next to you? <laughs> it's that not a stop class. though. Like that's that's the thing. If you if you try and talk to me, Dave, you're destroying the atmosphere. It's like you're <laughs> it's like you're actually on purpose trying to like put it down my ear rather than the rest of, <laughs> rather than the rest of the little stadium to hear it. It's like fuck off, Dave. I'm singing. <laughs> on the subject of songs this stuff does write itself uh, Bramley Toffee Apple has asked favourite artist from the following genres country oh um, cash cash, cash yeah. Yeah. Cool. although Wichita Lion Man by Glen Campbell is the best country song ever but gotta throw out gotta, gotta, gotta throw out Nathan Carter as well mate of mine went to school oh. with Nathan yeah, oh. yeah Irish, Irish country music fantastic lad Really Charlie Lowe as well. Smashed it, smashed it in Ireland. Number awesome. one's all over the gaff. And he's a really nice lad. So throwing Nathan Carter there. Cop yeah, I as, as a bear head lad, I'm <laughs> duty bound to say Charlie Lansbury as well. So Dave. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to find out what the call because it, it's in a film that I've seen and it's really, really good. And I started Sing it. Them. Sorry. Sing it. <sighs> That's like Shazam go ahead. <laughs> It's and I can't sing it because the song's just on the top of my tongue. I'm not. I'm not just saying that not to sing it, but I will find it out and happily sing it while you you guys carry on. Right. What's next film? genre. Pop. I'm gonna let. We're in, we're in a quiz now. What's the film, Dave? Hang on, I've got it now. <laughs> what hurts the most? Being so close. But the actual. I know that's like somebody's done some English version of it. That's shite. But these actually do it with the cowbells in it and all that. Oh, yeah. Because they're not like Cascada or some shit. No, the, the, I was going to say they're called something like the, the Rascals. It's not the Rascals. I've got a Rascal Flats. It's, it's That's five. Rascal Flats. Yeah, they're Rascal really, really Flats good. Yeah, the most. Yeah. Yeah, really good. There you go. Um, I don't know any other song these. They're <laughs> 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 great. <laughs> uh, pop. Dale's allowed for me all day. Uh, no. Well, pink, isn't it? Has to be pink. Although Brit- punk, Britney punk is well, not. Right. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't care how old you are. Britney Spears was uh, just a different level in all sorts of ways. What have you found there, Matt? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just astonished by the recesses of my mind. Cascada did do a version of what hurts the most. <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. 
<laughs> I just pulled that off the top of the head. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> proper pop world or something. They'd probably give it loads on that, like uh, Clubland or something like that, didn't she? <laughs> I've got, I've got to go. I've got, I've got to go for Venger Boys. Saw him in Reminisce Festival a few years ago, and it was back in it. It was before it was before I went to Total, and it was probably one of the best days of my life. <laughs> oh, what was that shit one every did for Love years? Um, there isn't one day. There isn't the shit one. There is. It's like slide to the left, slide to oh, the left. That's wow. a chap slide. That's not Venger oh, Boys. Mate, that was a Paul. Oh, that wasn't Venger Boys though. That's not Venger Boys. No, I'm just saying no. who, who did that one. Um. Crisscross, everybody clap your hands. You actually did really that one. Is that just no, like a one? Casper. Major, That's right, yeah. Major DJ one. Casper. I just left events. Yeah. If anybody oh. started doing that, you know, like a christening or anything like that, it was like that. See you later. You know what I mean? Matt, favorite pop. Miley. 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 Yeah. She could go into the country bit as well, though, couldn't she? She's got a bit of a. She's bit she's of a crossover a, there. Yeah. Who's this? She started. Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Very talented. Very talented. Isn't it? So. Oh, yeah. I like the oh, singing yeah. that uh, that mountain song. You climb the mountain. What song is that? Miley Cyrus is something to do with climbing a mountain. I don't know. She was Hannah Montana, wasn't she? That's where she started. Yeah, Hannah Montana was boss. Um, and her dad's hey, got one of the best songs as well. What is what, what is the one? Breaky Breaky Heart. Ah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah. Um, Hip hop. Della Soul for me. MF Doom as well. Very good. What what else is on what, sorry to just go in advance? What else is on that list of questions? Punk and soul slash R and B. Hip hop's M and M by a mile. M and M by an eight mile. Sorry. <laughs> come on. Yeah, I don't come like on. his eight mile, come on, Dave. I don't like his earlier <laughs> ones. This. I don't like his earlier ones and I don't like it where he's constantly talking like Particularly rude ways, but I like his like deeper stuff. Do you know what I mean? Do you like, lose yourself? The in one he did with yeah, and that went the one he did with Die. That was one of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah, Stan, okay. Stan, just brilliant. That's brilliant you, that's you to Tim Howard though. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Tim, well, well, dri- driving him off, a, <laughs> dri- well, driving him off a bridge into a, a canal. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, any more hip hop? Public Enemy. Yeah, yeah Charles, 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 Charles. records, absolute literature. Yeah. But yeah. one of my favorites, one of my favorites albums when I was a kid was Dre 2001 as well. It's Drake's not hip hop, man. No, Dre. No, Dre. Oh, Dre. I thought you said Drake. Dre. No, no, Dre. Dre 2001. Yeah. And Eminem Dre. was on it as well. I one of the best songs. On one of one. Of, yeah. There. Um, the 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 watch. Yeah, it's called on that original Dre album. It's one of the best songs ever as well. Mm. Really, really good. Check it out. Uh, <laughs> check it out. Um, punk. <laughs> it's like like me on top of the pops or something. <laughs> check it out. Punk. Oh, by the way, just going back to oh, just go going back to pop. Just going back to pop. Rita order. I forgot to mention as well. Rita order is really, really good. Shouts. Good to this question I, as well. I couldn't name a I couldn't name a single song by it, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Only please repeat. Uh, punk. Fucking punk. Sex Pistols for me, just for one album, because the great rock and wins. Great rock and wins. punk. Shite. Never Pet mind. Shop Boys classed as punk. Pet Shop Pet Boys. Boys. Probably more pop, I think. Is it? Yeah. Pet Pop Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Shit Pop Boys. <laughs> Matt's gone. Only- Matt's, Matt's got off. He's had enough of that, mate. No, he's had enough. He's had enough of that. Boys, and it was like that's it. I'm punk. done. <laughs> yeah, punk's, punk's not for Mac, clearly. Yeah. Any more punk? Define punk. I mean, name name some bands. Yeah, like it's... Right. Okay. So technically, punk may have started in about 1973-ish with the New York Dolls. First, but that was in America. First punk record was New Rose by the Damned, 1977. But the first sort of punk album was Nevermind the Bollocks by the Sex Pistols. That sort of, sort of, basically, you that's know what you're talking about, the honest. first punk album. But then you sort of had post punk with like, I think Blondie and stuff like that. And you got like pop punk. Blondie like, po- is Blondie punk? Post punk. Post punk, new wave. Like and soft then punk. 
and then you've got like Blink One Eight Two and things like that. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Oh, was, was, you, can, uh, you can go with yeah. any of that. I was going to say, is Red Hot Chili Peppers would they be the un- classed under punk or would they I think be they borderline? More funk than punk. Funk, yeah. I love I love the chilies as well. Because like, yeah, the Chili Peppers, yeah, boss. Blink One Eight Two. Um, chili Peppers have done some amazing, amazing Lim- songs. Limp Biscuits back in the day. Only one song mm-hmm. that knows. Uh, the, the new metal. Well, new metal. Yeah. New metal. Yeah, yeah I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah. yeah. New metal. Was that another? Yeah, because there was that. There was that sort of time, wasn't it, in the two thousands around the time that American Pie came out, and it was like yeah. that. Is that new, is that new punk? What was it called? It was new, new pop punk and new metal, basically around new the metal, same that's time. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we go to Solar and B. Because Mariah Carey, James crazy. James Brown. Yeah, I've saw I've seen James Brown really honestly before in the same show as the Chili's. Which is what? absolutely <laughs> <Wow>. remarkable. <laughs> Where was so, that? So it was a well when it used to be called the Commonwealth, um, where City's ground is. You know when they just yeah. finished doing the, the Commonwealth Games, wow. and um, we got tickets to go and see Red Hot Chili Peppers, and he put some shitty band on the one new just beforehand, but if it finished really early, it finished at about like six o'clock. And then he said, "Oh, we've got someone really special to come on before they started." And it was James Brown. Jesus, I mean, I honestly, oh. could could not believe it. So I was like, "I, I was, I was like, what, what's, what's the Red Hot Chili Peppers doing here? He's like going to steal their thunder." <laughs> oh, mate, it was amazing because he he brought on some little compare fella who's like talking around them all the time and all that. But mate, seeing him up close was amazing because all the kids and punk fellas, whatever you call them. They were all like not asked and just like at the back. But like I, I had um, what do you call it? Like gold zone tickets. So oh I was, yeah. Like, I was right at the front. Oh. And like I was I was like there was only a few of us who were like, man, this is James Brown. Nobody really knows what's going on here because they're all kids and whatnot. <laughs> but, like, mate, James Brown, I will get off after I've watched this. Ultimate legends. And then like when the um, when the chilies came on, mate, everyone like honestly the push forward was ridiculous, you know, when everyone just charges when yeah. you when you come on, but yeah, could, could not believe that at the Etihad. That is class. Oh, class that. 2002, um, that 2002. Okay. Uh, should we go? Should we go to Maggie's roundup? Let's go. Maggie's who who, put, who yeah. put the the Toy Story, the Toy Story two, Woody's roundup uh, gif on that? That was oh, that was Ed, wasn't it? Because it's the first that's thing I thought of. That's where the name comes roundup. from. Roundup, yeah. So, first up, Maggie's Roundup, Matthew, Vladimir, Dave Valera, Connolly, Flusk, political soapbox. <laughs> you can you can incorporate into this. Why was De Valera such a shite talk? So. Ah, uh, well, I might get some blowback from uh, some of our Irish listeners on this, but I do not have a very fond opinion of him because he basically precipitated the civil war in Ireland by refusing to uh, agree to the anglo irish Treaty about a thousand people died. Michael Collins was assassinated, and then once he'd had unchallenged power, he basically just accepted it anyway. And it's still in place today in the form of Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Obviously, now it's a republic. It wasn't. It was the free state after that. But yeah, for all that, it didn't actually change the price of fish. And I thought yeah. that was just a very, uh, just a very self-serving thing for him to do. But that's, typical that's American. Sort of- a bloody aversion of Starmer's page of the left, basically. A lot of work for not much game, really. Wow, well, that's a whole okay. other thing, isn't it? But... Yeah, I'll get pushed back on that because he did actually win. Yeah. But anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> any, any more on the political soapbox, Matt? Uh, not really. I mean, I reckon we all got the result that most people who listened to this wanted last week, so... Leisure we'll is off on that, mate, aren't you? Oh, no. We'll, we'll it, see where it, it goes. Like, it, Yeah, it was... I, it, I have no love for them and no love for the man, but we'll see where it goes. It, Anything's better than the Tories, yeah. slightly. So. And, it, and it was a perfect result because it wasn't the landslide they expected. A lot of independents got in, so it was a bit like, okay, yeah, it may have been more against the Tories than like a bit of you know enthusiasm for Labour, but anyway, yeah, as Matt said... You've got the season you wanted. And... Yeah. It was we'll, great we'll to see... see uh, it's great to see Corbyn though on his little yeah. 
on, on, in front of his little house there and all that, and all the media around and stuff like that. Just, yeah, it was nice to see a good person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it now, was. That obviously, that obviously was always going to happen itself as well. But do you know when you when you look at him, I'm sure you probably agree well, with me. Unless was, you know, every, every time I see him, every time I see him speak, I look at him and think, what could have been? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Every yeah. time I see him, there is there is always that. Um, Dave, come to you next. Rate the current Everton squad by who's the most likely to go to the leather shop. <laughs> is this actually is this, is this, this is Maggie's question, yeah. Wow. I mean I think we know the answer, don't we? It's like it's like a Christmas this, isn't it? It's like asking me about <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> I'd I'd actually changed from uh, Pickford. Oh. Yeah. Too. And I would go for uh, Michelenko. I oh, I God, that's I, a great shout. I could imagine him with like a dog collar. You know, you know when he let you know the game's finished and everyone comes out to the park end. I can imagine with the dog collar on like that, and like you know that picture that um, that Dan made of me and you. Yeah, I can imagine him walking around in the street like that. You know what I mean? Um, I I think I think he's happy to get the whip out, man. I I think he'd be. <laughs> he, I'm sure. Like I've got a vision of like you know when we we I think we had a question a couple of weeks ago about dice. Like what does dice do? Like and I reckon like he goes and puts himself in the man's toilets. And allows Michalenko in there with a the whip, and like, <laughs> but he enjoys it. Do you know what I mean? He's like, because he's his favourite left back. When when he has like man of the match performances, I reckon he's happy to let Michalenko go next to him with a with a leather. Do you know? Do you know? Just you know, that that is, I've got two more parts of this question. I'm actually terrified to ask them. Well, no, do you know? Fifty Shades of Grey was on the other night because I, I was waiting to. I was watching, waiting to watch a film. Oh, you know what? Have you seen? You were just you were just channel hopping and it came on. <laughs> just happened. Just happened to land on Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, no, that's it. I was waiting to watch. Um, if you see, and it, the rubbish films, but I don't know why me, me and her were watching it. The telly, just looking for a shitty film or whatever. But finance, uh, Final Destination. That's a belter. Yeah. So it's like the film. Yeah. So Final Destination was on like ten minutes after it, and I'd never seen um, Fifty Shades. Never seen it. She'd read the book and seen the films and all that. Dakota Johnson's on it as well. It's you know it's a different chat, but um, <laughs> like <laughs> some of the some of the tools he got out, mate. Honestly, like. You know, it's taking leather to another level. So it just like I was I was sitting there thinking, taking imagine notes. Sean Dice in that red room there. And then you know, Michelenko <laughs> Michelenko follows up. Uh, I mean, most likely to be asked to leave the leather shop, apart from you. Michelenko and Dice, maybe. Someone someone messaged me <laughs> saying there's a leather shop somewhere in town. What? There's a leather shop somewhere in town. Are you are you messing? No, called the leather shop. You don't know the leather shop in town. Is it actually is it actually a leather shop? I thought <laughs> that's where this whole bit it came was. from. No, it no, was. I was just I was just uh, fetish you've with never, leather. You've apparently. never seen the leather. Oh shit! We've opened Pandora's it, box here. It's you've a never seen the leather shop. shop. The Warhammer shop. Yeah, but it, you know when you say you say leather shop, does it just mean leather shoes? Is that all it means? Coats. Okay, it's full of jackets. Yeah. No, but it doesn't. Every... It doesn't have a dark section in the leather shop, does it? I don't know. It might. No, do. no. That's on Moorfields. <laughs> 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 it's called private shop, but it, it's on Moorfields. Yeah. <laughs> private shop. For private people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not messing. It's on the same side as the old JTs, like towards um, Exchange Station, mate. Right? Just on the I mean, you know, if, if you wanted to get, and I'm not so talking cold. about Ann Summers or something like that, but if you wanted to just, just spitball in here, it's family wanted, show, Dave. If you, know, you wanted, to, well, it's that's fine. You can get some whips for the kids, can't you? But you know, if, if, if you wanted to like get such, such things, where would you go yeah. in town for whip stuff? A private shop on Moorfields. Is that what it actually is? There you yeah. go. Do you remember, like, you they used go. to have like um, sneaky pawn shops and all that. Ask, asking for a friend. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's she's gone out. So. <laughs> oh, there's scandals on the dock on the new dock road as well. There's a scandals in Birkenhead as well. Just yeah. by future. So hang on, hang on, hang on. You Probably seem to know. Them. You guys seems to know a hell of a lot more about leather places than I do. 
Dave speak to us. We just, can we just note that? You can sort it. Yeah, I just fine. know where everything is in town. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's my answer then, Michalenko. Okay. Uh, <laughs> who's, 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 who's my most likely to smell of warm leather on a sunny day? You know what? Who's most likely to smell of warm leather on a sunny day? Warm leather? Yeah. No, no, you're it's, talking. It is summer, isn't it? Um, warm leather. Mm. It's a Do you want to have a think and we'll come back? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Right. And is that just for me, by the way? That's just for you. Oh, He's right, okay. okay. Right. He's... While, you're having a th- while you're having a think, though, Dave, just remember your camera's still on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and it's like that, fantasising, like, you know, I think I'll, uh, uh, you know... PJ Max, just leave it like that for a minute while I have a thing. <laughs> you put me on, please. <laughs> PJ Max, describe your absolutely perfect sausage butty. Leave no details out. I, I mean, I, I, I said this would be controversial because I'd be dead boring about it. Um, it's got to be Warburton's toasty bread. Yeah. Okay. Um, some like spread of some, you know, like um, like butter. Okay. What you put butter on a sausage roll? No, sausage oh, no sausage butter. Sausage butter. Sorry, sausage butter. Yeah. And then I'm having either, um, possibly Lincolnshire sausages or Cumberland sausages. I think it's potentially cheese, potentially mix it. But well, here we go. Right, I cut the sausages in half lengthways. You you put them so yeah. that they make the you know up, and then one on the side as well. So it oh, completely wow. fills the full you square. you got a sash as well. A sa- on the side, just to fill that little gap. Do you know what I mean? Like, this, you've got your four sausages, <laughs> and then you've got the one on the side to fill the gap. Right? Oh, okay. And then what I'm doing is, this is going to sound really bad now, cheese slice, Dairy what? Lee in particular. Genuine. Mate, you're, you're, you're making your sausage butty sound like Tetris. Right. <laughs> and then I'm having, this is the controversial bit, I'm having a little bit of tomato sauce. But I'm also having some mayonnaise, and then I'm cutting it diagonally. And honestly, it's beautiful. Mary Rose it, sauce, basically. It's I amazing. mean, Mary it, Rose sauce on sausages, though. Yeah, but try it. Try it. A little. We can't knock it till we tried it. To be fair, yeah. I but, put on burgers just, as well. Burgers. You've got to have. You have when you do a burger, you put the tomatoes. You, you put the mayonnaise on the bottom. You put the tomato ketchup on the top. So this cheese yeah. slice. Right, where's that going? So you have to sort inside. it on, your yeah, head, on top of yeah. the sausages. On okay. like, so where you've cut the sausages, yeah, you have to cheese slice like on top of the bit where you know, sort of like the middle of the sausages, so it's me- so it melts. Okay, do you know what I mean? You potentially might have to use one and a half cheese slices to fill one one side. Do you know what I mean? Because it's yeah, it, it, the square doesn't quite fill the whole thing. But I'm telling you now, it will be beautiful when you try it. All right. We've got to give it a go. We can't, you know. Yeah. After I'll knock it until you try it. So you make a, a sausage butty with a sash, some cheese, <laughs> ketchup, and mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, yeah. With with bread that comes out of an orange packet. Yeah. Are you going to the, are you going to the bonfire <laughs> later? <laughs> Pete, Pete, I know, I know you don't drink anymore, mate. I don't, I know you don't drink anymore. Do eh, you know what I mean? But you've, you've, um, you've, you've scared everyone with that. Oh, yeah. Peter was going to say, get your flute off, but Dave's camera might have gone off again. <laughs> um, You've got a right, flute. I'll tell You've you, got a flute. sausages make a great sausage butty as well. Absolute filth. Awful sausages, but great on a sausage butty. What did you um, say then, Les? What, Richmond's what sausages. Richmond's, yeah, Richmond. Richmond's, yeah. yeah sausage, Cracking yeah. on a sausage butty then. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible sausages. Pure filth, but great on a butty. All these are... Put them... well, what's you that, some like... ones? All these are sausages, yeah. Okay. Or even specially selected, but the old the, the old ones do stack up. Aldi ones, Aldi Aldi meet the meat section. And Aldi is the one. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's joint, you know, like joints of meat. Well, if we're, if we're going back to to filth, and it's the eye, <laughs> it's no, the eye. no, Dave, not your filth. Sorry, it, it's no, no, no. It's just um, you know PG filth, and I think I've had this <laughs> chat or um, debate, if you like, with many, including Maggie. And water, but um, salad cream on so- on sausages. No, no, no. that was the red. That, that was the red line, Dave. Salad Ooh. cream was the red line. Well, the red line was. I've just come back to what you asked me about. Who smells of leather? Right. 
it's it's back to Pickford, but his gloves when he'd finished the game. Oh god, yeah, not not and smells quite like old goalie gloves. Oh, mate, I'd take yeah, them yeah, on right. with me. I would. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you get? Didn't you get them once? And some you had to give yeah, them away. Yeah, some, I did, Brighton boys. We were. It was we were there, weren't we, Les? Yeah, and yeah, uh, I think we lost one nil. And some kids, like, I don't know, he's about five or six, some little shit. And he's screaming, oh, give me give me your gloves, give me your gloves. And I was just standing there at the end, just wait, you know, waiting for the crowd to get out so we could walk out. And I was standing there, I've got a good photo of this as well. And I was standing there and Pickford comes over to me, to me. And he comes over with his gloves and he goes like that. And gives him, so I just went that, like, nice one. And then he went, give them to that kid. And I was like, <laughs> what? And it was, I don't know if you've ever seen this thing where, um, you know, with the, the baseball uh, in the States, someone hits a home run and like a little kid's about to catch it, but some gimp jumps in front of him and catches it. Oh, yeah. And it, like everyone kicks off and he eventually gives the kid the ball. And I was like, just, just put your head down and walk away, please. No one noticed this. Please don't notice it. And then like he looked at me with those like, you know, Little eyes and his mum and dad were there, so I thought, yeah, he had son go on. He had the kit on as well, didn't he? He had what? He had the kit on as well. Yeah, yeah, and like I thought, ah, oh, do you know what? I'm not going to be allowed to games anymore, and I will be considered like a seriously bad, bad man <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't give the the kid these gloves. So yeah, that was the. Uh, but he, he didn't. Well, we couldn't know if they were smelled or not, Les, because it was absolutely freezing, wasn't it? It was, and we it just didn't get a chance. You weren't in your hands long enough. But I hope that, that kid must that was twenty what twenty eighteen. Say if that kid's yeah. about six or seven, I mean he's phew, might be able to sell them on eBay for a decent fee. Particularly the fact that he goes and wins a, is, a, 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 a international. Tournament. His mum and dad cashed in straight away as soon as he got. I was going to say his dad sold them on the way home yeah. on the coach. Hundred percent. Going to say like yeah. just just slap the lad and say give me the clubs we're selling them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one from one for me, uh, Les Will Wizard. Uh, Roberts, is it coming home? What does it actually mean? How we do we def- how do we define football as a nebulous philosophical concept? Um, it's not coming home because Spain will win, unfortunately. Um, philosophical concept. It, it just spitballing here, but it is a pronoun used to denote an object or concept previously mentioned or easily identified in context. While football as a nebulous philosophical concept can be defined as a cultural, social construct that embodies competition, physicality, and communal identity, which I think we can all get on board with, really. It's, that's pretty much the size I need, of it, I I need to make two very quick points, Les. Go ahead. Firstly, Euro 96 was when that fo- when It's Coming Home came around. Yeah. And it wasn't a, it wasn't about England winning it. It was about football coming home because it, it England was invented football. So, right. so the actual meaning behind the song isn't about winning. In fact, if anything, it's about how crap we are. And about how England lose all the time. Like the whole song is about it can, like, Yeah. Yeah. And it's about basically being really delusional and being over optimistic. But essentially it's about football literally coming home because we were hosting the tournament. The second thing I'd like to say is that football also has already come home because the Lionesses won the Euros. And I was there with ninety thousand other people at Wembley to see it with my own eyes. So incredible. And the bad so thing this- Euro qualification happens tonight as well. They've got a match tonight. Um but yeah, with the It's Coming Home, the, the second song that I liked, uh, um, the Euro 96, the, the 98 version was miles better as well for It's Coming Home, <laughs> if you listen to that, because at the start of it, it's, in, it's England in that horrible great, uh, great kit that they wore against Germany. And the first yeah. thing on it, quite ironically these days, is Southgate missing his pen. <laughs> oh. So um, yeah, the, the It nah. is Coming Home, um, I just... Look, I keep on counting the days until the season starts, to be honest with you, mate, because I, I can't stand international football. And I know many, I get the point when people are saying that, oh, well, you know, it, it fills the summer up and all that sort of thing. But it's not a World Cup. I do love a tournament. I, I love an international tournament. Just on that great kit as well. It's, it's been a, a shy tournament. tournament before you say that, though, Les. It's been a crap tournament. It started off well, then it hits a bit of a lull in the middle. But I think the, uh, the, the standard of games lost. have been crap. The semi, I think the first, I think before that third, like play that like last round that game, it, that, the third it went shit yeah. then. Um, but the semi-finals have been class as well. That England shirt though, 
um, it was it was designed to look like denim to go with jeans, wasn't it? Like a very oh, very nineties yeah. thing, right? <laughs> but double denim. Actually, I saw someone has made a denim version of that shirt. It's as bad as you'd imagine. Yeah, awful. <laughs> Um, you're wearing it tomorrow, are you? Oh, 100%, yeah. <laughs> Someday. Does, yeah. It come in, does it come in leather? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One sleeve with leather patches on the elbow. And leather <laughs> um, oh, right. We've got, what, let's do five minutes more. Uh, okay, more Maggie. Uh, in honor of Sligo away, what's your favourite summer friendly? Mine's away from me, seeing Evan get beat twice in one afternoon. Will never be surpassed. <laughs> Where was this? What was this one? Mines away. Marcos, I think it was Marco Silva's summer tournament. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think we played Sevilla and Mines and yeah. got beat twice. But Everton's games were the first two, so we could just get off after that. It was great. It was over the worst or the best. Uh, whatever. You, you, just your favourites. That I mean, it was. It was. In, it was watching football in Germany. It was outstanding. It was yeah. such a good weekend. But worst one I saw was a Berry away. Uh, oh, I didn't take it about four hours to get there to get yeah, there all back. Oh, mate, it was a bit that was a bit smaller. I, I think there was, was Betty away, yeah. It was when we had uh Nias as well, and he went through on goal one on one with you know some fella from the five side league or something like that who was in goal for Betty at the time and he was struggling and he just skies it. And I'm not joking from about like the penalty spot, just absolutely skies it. You just did because obviously it was like I don't know five to get in as they usually are, and um, the, the whole side the bit most people were ever the more Evertonians there because it was to help Betty and the issue that was going on there, which obviously they folded yeah. in the end. Um, so there, obviously there were loads of people there to get into that ground. Was mad by the way. You had to walk basically through a park to get to the uh, to the entrance, and um, yeah, that happened. I'm not sure what kit we had on, but it was a new kit. And uh, he he blasts one over me from about pen <laughs> penalty spot. And when, when did we get him? Did we get him mi- mid season? Did we? The ass. Yeah, the January. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't really, like so, the, the season finishes and everyone's like, oh, he's going to be shit off this fella. He's going to be brilliant." Someone when he blasted over, just some fella was sitting about like a few yards away and just goes, "He's going to be fucking shite, him, isn't he?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, just preordained everything. Do you know what I mean? I remember seeing him in. I, I remember seeing him warming up against Bournemouth in the FA Cup when I think Barkley scored. We, it was the only time we've actually beaten them there. Yeah, it's all the penalty. No, that wasn't was it. That was Barkley when we got it to three two. Everyone falls out the, uh, no, the stand twice. and then they make it back to three. Stanner's last scores after him, doesn't he? Yeah, Barkley scored that, in that. that, that, that was the three all, but there was there was also an FA Cup game where we, right, where, okay. where we beat them. And basically, in the ass, it was the first time he'd been. He just signed. It was the first time he was named in the squad. I saw him warming up at half time, and honest to God, he looked like he'd won a competition. And he was literally like the ball was getting pinged to him, and he was just like the ball had come to him, it'd just fly off his foot, and he'd like run over, like laughing to himself. Like <laughs> <laughs> he must and have loved he, him, made billions of being absolutely shite forever. Yeah. But then he'd like ping the ball back to I can't remember who was warming up with him now, but the ball would go like 10 yards away from the player, and then eventually he just ended up just getting a ball and just doing like keep ups on his own. And I remember looking at him thinking, oh my God, this lad is like horrendous. You know, like the way you can just tell about a footballer when you see them, like the, the way they're balancing everything. I looked at him and thought, nah, he is awful. To be fair, he tried hard though, didn't he? He, he put a shift in. That means not the problem. Premier League, though, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Premier League striker. Oh, it's all right, he tries hard. He tries hard. That'll, that's, that's that'll do for us, that. Yeah, they go. Matt, yeah, they go. Matt have, you got, have you got a favourite summer friendly? The old kind of just Blair, don't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. Everton, Everton. Sligo's going to be the first one I've actually done that wasn't a good one, I think. Uh, That'll be a belt. What's, the one where we won, what's the one where we won that trophy in in uh, China or something, didn't we? It was the, Ta- Thailand? The, the fr- oh, yeah, the, the friendly trophy or something, wasn't it? Yeah, there was the Sports Pacer Cup as well. Mm. Oh, yeah. We did, we didn't keep hold of because we got beat by Cali. Oh, Landy mate. You, what, what is the to- <laughs> tournament we won where you've got Osman and Neville walking around with the trophy? Florida, not the Florida Cup? No, that was, was uh, that? Sydney Rose against Racism Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Someone find out what that trophy was. Google that it, now, Les. It was, it was Sydney yeah. Rose against Racism Trophy. You will never sing that. No, it wasn't. This is something else. It was. 
No, it wasn't. It was called something else. And it, oh, we've been just been ripped to sh- to ripped to shreds by Liverpool fans for doing it. Do you not remember the pitch yet? Yeah, um, it must have been like twenty twelve ish time. And Neville and Osman, it, it's the peace, the peace something peace trophy. No, nope. we won. It it is. I've got it up now. Twenty ten. It's now called the Translink Cup, but at the time it was called the Sydney Rose Against Racism Trophy. And I'm holding no the picture now no, the, of Neville the, and Osman. Are you thinking of the Brotherhood Cup, Dave, against Everton? No, we're talking some shit here about Baddy yeah. sort of sadly. No, there's the Make Peace Trophy or something, mate, honestly. Bob Geldof, give it or something like that. I don't know. Do you, do you remember that one where we, where we went to? Do you remember that tournament when we went to America and we beat we beat Juve on pens? Yeah, that was great. That was Benanka. But we were meant to play in the final, and then they they like changed the rules. rules. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> so, Madrid in the final. Yeah, <laughs> it was such a stitch up there. Fucking hell. Um, Tom Davis now is a chopstick factory. Tony Hibbert has a big car plate. What's the weirdest post football career you can think of? Uh, two from Poncho Sombrero. Tommy Gravison ended up a millionaire in Vegas. This is his poker face. The poker face is that one where he's sort of gaining and he's got a little bit of hair and he looks really <laughs> weird. He's in that puma kit. Um, and also, didn't Aaron Dizio become a private detective but didn't notice Harry Brown envelope red now after politics for years? <laughs> didn't know about that, but... That, that, um, that Gravison thing about Vegas, just uh, not having that. I don't think that's... That, that's no. not true. But he's doing he these uh, things. Well, doing the no, things. Sorry, Mac. Gravison didn't make his money in Vegas. He made his money in investments, made about 200 million euros, and then moved to Vegas. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's much more boring, isn't it? Than him turning up, getting a load of strippers, and then, you know, winning poker. Do you know what I mean? But I, I, <laughs> guess, I guess we'll find out because they're doing all the. They keep, I don't know if everybody else keeps getting the emails. So they're doing these all sorts of events. So they've got the Carsley and uh, Gravison ones coming up in October or something like that. I think you can get tickets for them as a season ticket holder. Sound like I'm advertising them for the club myself, but <laughs> <laughs> the loads of that sort of things happening. But I, I actually think that'd be great. That seeing him and and Carsley, yeah, you know, like oh, just going to be all sorts of like, oh, did Real Madrid forget that that was you and all that sort of thing? But you are right. Going back to it, by the way, Matt, um, about the. What that the the raw against racism cup, and there's the there there it is. is. Yeah, get that close, can I? There it is. Keeps playing out there. They are. There they are. What the Um, what the FA Cup could have been if it wasn't for Tim Howard? There we go. (laughs) We've almost gone full circle there. We'll quickly finish on this one. Uh, Gary and Michael come back to yours next week. Uh, Gary's asked, to, this is a very similar question. In light of Joe Biden calling Vladimir Zelensky President Putin, ever embarrassingly called someone the wrong name, not having anyone call him a teacher mum either. And Keith has asked, have you ever said the wrong name at a terribly inconvenient time? Yeah. Come that on. Teacher, I've, that I've, teacher mum thing, I've done that, man. I've done that. Last, last week, though. <laughs> I, I'm really, I'm really bad with names, so it takes me like a long time sometimes to to actually remember. It, it's not, it's nothing personal. It just is a thing with me that I'm really bad with names, and it's it's got me in, in all kinds of bother. <laughs> that but is personal, though. You can't say that. That is. Personal. I'm the same though. So it's like someone, you someone that, but... themselves, tell you the name, and you're engaged with them and like listening to them, and then suddenly it's gone straight away. Yeah, and yeah. And, the, and the thing, the thing I find as well is that like. Because you've already asked them, you can't like you've had that opportunity. Then do you know what I mean? And like just yeah. it just sometimes it just takes my brain a while to to, to click in and to, to start. So I've I've done it where I've literally called someone the wrong name for like fucking it or or not known their name for years. Like so I just yeah. You, so you then just they, go with mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. And then like I think the opposite is they find find it awkward to say no. That's not really my name. You know, mate. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Or like, I am called. Can you please stop it? Because your friendship's over then. Or, you know, just <laughs> just some, like, person that you've met. It's gone already. Do you know what? This actually happens a few times to me in, in uh, Denby. Do you know when a lot of people come in? Obviously, loads of fans come in and post-match and stuff like that. And they'll come over and say, oh, you're all right, Dave, and all that. I'm not saying, like, I'm famous or anything. But, you know, when they've seen us recording the post-match, and they said, oh, all right, Dave, how's it going? 
I've shook their hand. Oh, I love what you, you love what he's doing, all that sort of thing. And because it's so loud in there, as we all know, they'll say who it is or their Twitter name. And I'd be like, Twitter names oh. are hard. Oh, and I'm like, oh, you know, well, people listening, just give me a name, please. When you if you come up to meet me, anybody that comes forward, because I'm not just, I just don't, I'd like to know who you are. Um, I'm sounding like Joe Biden here, aren't I? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know who I am, just come and say, all right, Joe. Do you know what I mean? Just call everyone President Putin. Just do that. It, the, the, great thing, the great thing about where you all come from, everyone says lad, and I'm happy with that. Like, yeah. someone comes up, you're all right, lad. Yeah, I'm sound, lad. It's like, it's like when you play five aside with a load of people you don't know. Everyone's yeah. just the armies, but lad. Yeah. 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 That's it. Matt, ever said out the wrong name at a terribly inconvenient time? I don't think so, no. Um, nah. Like Pete, I'm kind of crap remembering names for a bit, but usually I'm a bit too awkward to say the wrong name. I'm I am the, I am the same as well, Steve. <laughs> no one got that joke. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I told you before, it's a tough crowd. It is a tough crowd. up, Paul. <laughs> right, on that tumbleweed moment, we will finish this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Dave, thanks to Pete, thanks to Matt. Um, I'm going to whip, I'm gonna whip you when I see you. I said Gary and Mike will come back to yours next week. Um, but Mike, just to say, Jordan Lee Pickford is really fucking good. Um, we'll catch you next time on Mailbag.